They say that patience is a virtue. But perhaps never was one more out of step than that in our culture. The 21st century is defined by our impatience. We expect to be always connected, always available. We expect to have what we want and to have it now. We have fast food and fast fashion and fast answers and fast results. We never sit still. We're always looking to the next thing and waiting drives us crazy. Remember the last time you were stuck in a traffic jam or the train or the plane was late or worst of all, the internet went down? I want to reflect a little bit on the importance of patience and the importance of learning to trust in God's timing and the ways in which that can save us from a great deal of pain. The story that Tim just read for us is a really significant episode in the Genesis story and in the life of Abraham and Sarah. Remember, Abraham's name means the father of many nations. And God had said to him, your descendants will be as numerous as the stars and all nations will be blessed through your family. And he believes God and it is credited to him as righteousness. Abraham is a hero of faith. And yet, even this hero fails. So after 10 years, Abraham and Sarah are still childless. And you know that that's a deeply painful experience for any couple. But this is complicated by those very promises of God. The covenant that God made with Abraham appears to be at stake here. How is it going to be fulfilled? Has God failed them or have they failed God? And eventually their doubt and their fear and their impatience leads to anger. Sarah expresses her frustration and she does so by blaming God. Verse 2 said, the Lord has kept me from having children. You can feel her pain and disappointment, and it's all too easy when you have those experiences to turn that into blame. It must be someone's fault. And so they decide to take the plan into their own hands. And in doing so, they make a terrible decision. Now, what they do would have been, well, not uncommon, in their culture, but it is obviously immoral. It is an abuse of power and a terrible plan which will have disastrous consequences. Sarah has a slave girl named Hagar and she gives the slave girl to Abraham. Abraham sleeps with her, Hagar conceives, and from that moment, it all starts to go wrong. Straight away, shame and pride start to rear their heads once more. Verse 4, when Hagar knew that she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. The slave girl looks with contempt at Sarah. Sarah sees how Hagar looks at her. Their relationship starts to fail. Abraham and Sarah's impatience. Their inability to live with their fear and their doubt lead to choices that make everything worse. And here's my first observation on this story. Patience is the ability to sit with discomfort, to manage those kind of negative feelings that we live with so much of the time. Patience is hard and needs to be learned. It doesn't come naturally. But when we act out of impatience, it's because we want those negative emotions to go away. We want to feel better. But instead of solving the problem, acting out of impatience all too often makes the problems multiply. And that's exactly what happens here. I think it's a really serious issue, a really serious issue for us and in our culture. Our inability to kind of hold 
our emotions and our feelings and our discomfort means that we'll do almost anything to get rid of them. And so we overeat, we overspend, we over-medicate, we run from our feelings. Patience is the ability to hold the negative things that we experience and not act out of them. Then talking of running away, that's exactly what Hagar does, probably very rightly so. Verse 6, Sarah mistreats Hagar and she uh, flees from her. And in many ways, that might have been the end of Hagar's story. She escaped. She was far gone. She'd run into the wilderness. But did you see in the story that God seeks her and goes after her? And that what this story reminds us is that God cares for the underdog and the outcast and the marginalized and the one in poverty. This poor, insignificant slave girl is not insignificant in the eyes of the Lord. And there is in this story this kind of lovely encounter, which is not kind of primarily what we're looking at here. But she's run into the wilderness. uh, uh, An angel meets with her, asks her where she's going, and promises that God will protect her and that she will have many offspring. And it's just this, I don't know, this is really important thing that we have to remember, that God sees and cares for the powerless and the outcast and the slave. Verse 11 said, the Lord has heard of your misery. God sees this poor young mother alone in the world and promises good to her. The story of Hagar demonstrates that survival is possible even in the most awful circumstances because God sees. And there's a beautiful moment in verse 13 Well, you get this sense of this apparently insignificant girl who has a a profound encounter with God. And in fact, so much so that she gives God a new name. Verse 13, she says, you are the God who sees me. You are the God who sees me. She has a unique personal relationship with God. And it's a precious story for all of those who've known what it's like to be alone and outcast in the world. In fact, I think it reminds us of another poor young mother, pregnant in immoral or apparently immoral circumstances, who God sees and who takes a central place in the great story of God's redemption. But like I say, that's an aside. Back to Abraham. What do we make of this episode, this obvious failure? Well, I think it's probably worth saying that the Bible is fairly blunt about the failings of figures, even the great figures, in its story. You can argue, really, that there are no great heroes in the Bible apart from God himself. It is God who is patient with flawed people. God perseveres with people even when they lose their way, even when they fall short. And of course, he is patient with us. The truth is that Abraham and Sarah and their families will live with the consequence of this choice that they've made. But God does not give up on them. God is faithful to them and he will be faithful to you. But there is in this chapter a really important lesson about impatience. I think it was a really important story for the Old Testament people of God who were impatient for God to keep his promises, to establish their kingdom and defeat their enemies. And they struggled with why it took God so much longer than they thought it would. And likewise, we are impatient for God to come through for us. And yet God rarely works in the way or in the time scale that we would like him to. Have you noticed that the purposes of God always seem to take an awful lot longer than we think that they should? Has that been your experience? Certainly mine. Why is that? I can't tell you the answer why, but I can say that his perfect plans involve a much bigger picture than the rather narrow bit that we can see. 
that the way that God works is kind of involving so much more than we can imagine. And so, of course, it takes longer. And I can also say that the things that we learn in the waiting might just be the most important things. We care about outward stuff. We want a problem solved. We are faced with some kind of crisis and we pray that God would help us to find a resolution to it. But God cares first and foremost about the inward things, about our hearts. And it's learning patience that allows us to be formed in character and wisdom. It is patience which helps us to come to terms with who we are as people, learning to master and manage this wayward heart of ours, learning to regulate our emotions and our feelings and makes us the sort of people who are able to see beyond ourselves and be a blessing to others. Above all, God wants us to be formed in the image of Christ and to learn to seek the greatest thing of all. Because what's important in life isn't simply that our problems are solved, but that we learn to seek and find the God who made us, the God who is the greatest thing of all, who longs for us to learn to trust in him and depend on him and to delight in him. Quick solutions are rarely good solutions. And this time that it takes, well, one day we will understand why it needed to take that much time. And in the waiting, in the learning of patience, we are formed in better ways than we can imagine. How do we learn patience? And it needs to be learned. I mean, in some ways, life simply does teach us patience. And those of You who've been around longer than others will know that patience was simply something that life taught us. But I would also say that there's no better way to learn to be patient, to learn to be at at peace in the unknown is the best way is to learn to pray, is to learn to allow God to, to see us, to find peace in his presence to trust that his purposes will work out at the right time in the right way. Look at how often Jesus goes off to a quiet place to be with his father, especially before he had big decisions or big things to do. We are so often distracted, so in a rush to get things done or to move on to the next thing. God would have us learn to be still, to seek his presence, to seek his wisdom and his purposes. I'm also struck that in prayer comes a growing self-awareness, that we understand ourselves and our emotions better in relationship to God. We start to understand why I feel the way I do. And we learn not to always rush into things out of impatience or pride or fear. We learn to stop trying to take the initiative ourselves and fix the problems that then end up making the situation worse. I am struck that patience is an act of faith. It is believing that God has this. And it doesn't come easy, even for the heroes of faith like Abraham. It needs to be learned and practices. But wisdom teaches us that God is in no hurry and that to grow in faith is to learn patience, to slow down, to trust. And you know, one of the great joys of patience is that it allows us to receive the gift of God day by day. The gifts of God are dispensed little by little, and they're in the the gift of each day, the blessings that surround us. And it's in patience that we get to see those blessings when all too often we would rush by on the other side. Patience is perhaps the foundation of all spiritual disciplines that we learn to trust, to pray, to be still, to delight in the Lord. It is 
hard-earned. It couldn't be more incongruous in a world which is in such a hurry. But learn patience as you will. Take it seriously. Learn to master who you are and to seek the Lord and his presence. And the gift is that you will know the blessings of God day by day. Psalm 37 says this, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. May the Lord give you the desires of your heart in his good time. Amen.